Oops, LinkedIn says you're not approved for LinkedIn Live. Oh, shoot, that's right. Oops, hold on, edit. Okay, so we need to move that destination and put in Periscope. Okie dokie. Hey friends, this is Liquidy and welcome to another um, What's New Wednesday. Today I have a guest who I'm super excited about and um, we um, have been chatting for a little bit, but then we actually reconnected on the Nourish Festival a couple weeks ago, which I'm super excited about. And so um, my guest today um, is from the Northeast. She also loves food and travel like I do, and I'm sure like many of you do, because that's probably why you are watching this video. And um, also she, um, but in addition to loving food and travel, she actually actually brings her food home and creates these wonderful recipes. And she's been cooking since she was little. She's always loved to make recipes and cook. And I'm really excited to have her on today. And I'm going to be introducing her new book for what's new, her two new eBooks for what's new Wednesday. And we'll talk about this a little bit. But first, I want to welcome um, Jennifer Fitzpatrick from the, uh, no, no, wait, Fitzpat the Nomadic Fitzpatrick's. <laughs> hey, Jen, welcome to what's new Wednesday. Hi, thanks, Aliquity. I'm so happy to be here, and thank you for having me. I am so excited um, that you are here today as well. And one of the things, so you have two books. So um, you have one of them is entitled The Bread Recipes Around the World, and your other one is entitled Gluten-Free Travel at Home. So the Gluten-Free Bread Recipes, I love that one for a couple of different reasons. And um, But before we jump into the actual book detail, what inspired you to create these two eBooks? Um, for gluten-free travelers? So it actually came about from being in quarantine in 2020. And um, in 2019, my husband and I took um, unpaid sabbaticals from our jobs to backpack around the world for six months. So it really started last year in six months of travel um, across five different continents. And coming home, I was like, I need to keep I need to keep traveling as much as possible, even if it's only traveling from my kitchen. And that's where the real inspiration started. I always loved to cook gluten-free. I've had celiac disease since 2009, but it was finally like a light bulb just switched on in my head. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is how, this is how I'll keep traveling. I'll just keep cooking international inspired dishes and use that as a way to keep learning about other cultures while I'm back home. That's awesome. And I, I love traveling around the world too, as you know, but um, I've never thought about bringing recipes home. I always thought like I'm eating it there or I'm packing it in my luggage. <laughs> so yeah. I love that you have like these great recipes from all over the world, like in the bread one, um, I'm excited to try all of them because I just love bread and I love baking, but I'm especially <laughs> excited about um, the cinnamon churros, uh, the French eclairs because eclairs are just amazing and soft pretzels because I'm also from the Northeast. And so soft pretzels are like a staple food in your diet. Like I think you'll die if you don't eat them and you're from the Northeast. <laughs> So, um, but one of the things I love about your book, um, because not all recipe books do this, is you have a how to use the book and you actually have um, some baking tips and tricks and actual pictures of the products that you use. So tell me more about like how you decided to put all that in the cookbook. So a lot of that came from just trial and error with the recipes. And as you know, there are so many different gluten-free flour blends on the market today. It can be really, really hard to know which ones work for which types of recipes. So after 10 years of cooking and baking, I've started to gravitate towards a, a few different products and I wanted to see if they really were the best products for the job. So I took one of my recipes in the book, the non flatbread, and I said, I'm going to test this with like four or five of the most popular flowers on the market today. And I'm going to see which ones stand up to the test. And the two that did the best job were cup for cup and Bob's Red Mill one to one. There's two Bob's Red Mill flowers. This is the one in the blue bag. And from there, I said, you know what? If these two flowers did the best job for the non, I think they're going to do the best job for all the other recipes too. And they did. So I stuck with those two and made all of the recipes specifically for those two flowers. So that way anyone can go and buy them and make them. And so what's the difference between, because I've used the red bag one-to-one -one before. So what's the difference between the blue bag and the red bag for Bob's Mill one-to-one -one gluten free? So the blue bag is specifically for baking and the red bag is all purpose. Um, I, I, I think that there's a difference. There might even be a difference in the amount of xanthan gum. Um, I'm not sure hundred percent. I know the components of the flowers are a little bit different. I think one of them has garbanzo flour in it. I think the red bag does. Yeah. And it can make a really, really strange bean kind of flavor and texture to some of your baked goods, which not everybody is a fan of. <laughs> um, whereas the blue bag does not contain that, I'm pretty sure. Um, it does have sorghum flour in it, which gives it a more deeper texture and flavor, but it's still really good. 
and it gives you the elasticity and the texture that you're looking for in baked goods. Like the eclairs, love making the eclairs. I thought they were amazing making them dairy free because the Bob's Red Mill flour is dairy free. They were scrumptious. I mean, every time I went into my mm. fridge, I ate one. Every oh. time. <laughs> I would probably eat it twice gone. a day. Oh, when they were gone, it was like, thank goodness they're gone. <laughs> Too much eclairs. Right? It's like, what's your diet, eclairs? Every day, all day. <laughs> oh, I can totally get that. Okay, so I didn't know the difference between the Bob's Red Mill, the red, and the blue bag. So I'm going to, because I have the red bag, I'm totally switching to the blue bag. And I have seen the cup for cup before, but I haven't tried it because I didn't know if it was good. So I will definitely try that. Um, another thing that I love about your book, um, the bread one, is that you have dairy free adaptations. Because as you probably well know, that a lot of people who have celiac disease also cannot eat a lot, of, cannot eat dairy. Yeah, absolutely. Even I myself, I'm a little lactose intolerant. So if I can make something dairy free, I usually will. Um, I will say that cup for cup though is like the best flour for pastry. So that's like my number one recommendation for the book. But Bob's Red Mill is a very, very close second and a wonderful dairy free alternative. Um, but yeah, everything has dairy free adaptations so that anyone with any type of dairy allergy, lactose intolerance, um, or even someone that's going, um, I don't know, low, FODMAP, low FODMAP or has IBS, you can make them and enjoy them. And um, so switching over to your gluten-free travel at home, I love in the in the top of at the top of your book at the top in the beginning of your book, you talk about like gluten-free travel ideas at home, and then you have um, gluten-free baking tips again, and you have the travel in inspired recipes. And one of the things you demoed at the Nurse Festival was the pad thai, and I made that for my daughter because she's vegetarian and she's celiac, and she absolutely loved, like the whole family loved it. So what? we are totally gonna make that again soon. It was super easy to make; like your instructions were impeccable. Like, like it was, I just followed them and everything worked out perfectly. Um, and our friend came over for dinner and she absolutely loved it too. So it was like everybody cleaned their plate like there was nothing left. <laughs> oh, this makes my heart so happy. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, when the one thing you love to hear as, you know, as a, as a person that creates recipes or a food blogger, you just want other people to be able to enjoy food. And especially for other people that have celiac or that are gluten free that you don't normally get to enjoy when it when I get a response like that I'm like this is why I do this like this is why I spend all this time in the kitchen trying to come up with new things it's for that it's so that yeah. people can enjoy it no it's really great and so Jen I want to know what are some of your favorite recipes from either one of your books like what are some ones you and I'm really I'm really um I really want to try the naan because what I want to do is I have a favorite Indian restaurant we eat out here in Salt Lake and it's called Saffron Valley. But um, and they have papadam, which is gluten free, but they don't have gluten free naan. So what I want to do is like make some of your gluten free naan and bring it with me to the restaurant. Yeah. I do that. I bring my own bread. It's like BYOB, but it's not alcoholic bread. <laughs> Yeah, not bring your own beer, bring your own bread. Um, yeah, no, I I really love the naan. The naan is super simple, like four ingredients. It's so easy to make. Um, from the bread ebook, my favorite would have to be <laughs> the eclairs. <laughs> and um, what's the other one I really like? I really like the focaccia. I, I, I love making, I love fresh rosemary. It's one of my favorite herbs and it's my husband's favorite too. So anything that I can put rosemary in, I will devour. So those are my two favorites, the eclairs and the, the focaccia. And in the travel at home ebook, the scones are super tasty. It's a different version of the scones that are in the bread ebook and the pot stickers. Oh, so <sighs> nice and crispy when you like, you know, fry them on the uh, on the stove top. And I made my own um, pork and um, I think it's pork chives and some cabbage filling with some soy sauce, sesame oil. Oh, so good. Oh, Yum. Man. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you just gave me an idea because one of my brands I use a lot is called Longev and mm -hmm. it's a plant-based like crumble. And so um, since my daughter's vegetarian, she doesn't eat meat, but I was really, I could just season that and put it in the pot stickers and make vegetarian mm -hmm. ones for her. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. Okay. You will see my tag on Instagram when I do that. <laughs> sure. That's going to be fun. I'm so excited because I'm always looking for like vegetarian gluten-free stuff for her to eat. Um, so that's super exciting. And they're super easy to, to store too, because you can just put them in the fridge for a few days and she can just snack on them. So that's awesome. I'm super excited about that. And so, um, so Jen, you have these two books. And so where can people find your two books and where can people find you online? So my Instagram is jeffiner589, J-E-F-I-N-N-E-R, 589. I am a high school teacher, so I have my name be a little bit, you know, hidden <laughs> just in case. I don't want really, no offense to my students, but this is kind of separate from what I do when I'm teaching, so I, I keep it separate. Um, and my blog is called The Nomadic Fitzpatrick's. It's just thenomadicfitzpatrick's.com. 
And on my Instagram link, you can find the links for my eBooks, which are on Gumroad, which is a site where I sell a lot of my products. So that's all available on my Instagram profile. Just go to the top link and click on the links and you'll see the eBooks and you can buy them right there. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, um, I'm also excited too. So just so the listeners know who are watching this video, um, Jennifer is going to be on a future episode of Travel Gluten Free where we're going to really dive into her books and her travels. And I'm really excited about that. So Jen, thanks for making the time today to come on What's New Wednesday. And I'm excited for uh, people to know about your book and definitely buy her ebook. She has amazing recipes. They're really good because like sometimes I get recipe books. I'm like, eh, the recipes aren't that great. Um, but hers are amazing. You'll absolutely love them. So Jen, thanks for coming on today and sharing your books. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.